pretty good thing that we had going between us. You get it, Alexander? In lots of ways. Spelled L-O-T-S. I think I get something else. You're quite a little speller, aren't you? I won a prize once, 6B. He's the one, Nor. I began to think of it before in the projection when I saw him going to that spelling bit of his. He used it on the phone yesterday when he gave me the tip. The tip that you were in the hospital. You, Johnny? Why? Because I didn't want you there, that's why. Because I didn't want you running away and hiding with any head shrinker. Because I'm the one who knows how to take care of you. And if I had to use some jerk reporter to help blast you out of there, that was okay with me. Get out of here. Get away from me. You make me sick. I despise you. You're fired. Nora, baby, you can't do that. Now, let's be grown up. What's the matter? Didn't you hear her? Do you really want me to go, Nora? Yes. Get out of here. All right, Mr. Reporter. You seem to have this assignment pretty well in hand. I'll go. Oh, uh, by the way, why don't you ask her just one more question? Ask her why Martin West killed himself. Martin West. I knew it would be something. Look, Nick, I got a lot of people sitting around here who can handle this. Now, wouldn't you like to go back to work on something a little more current? I want to stay with this one, Mark. Uh, what about the Martin West suicide? I wasn't working in New York then. He did it in a small midtown hotel. Sleeping pills. And he'd left his wife. Word was that there was a girl. Who? Who was the girl? Martin West was a very discreet man. Nobody ever heard her name. Was there anything unusual in that room? Just West and an empty pill bottle. Kluge. We're talking about the Martin West suicide. You covered that, didn't you? <laughs> covered it. I got a prize for that one. The high heel shoes. Uh, how soon did you get there? Must have been pretty soon, because the boys in the morgue were still there. I remember that they said that one other person had been there before. Someone from West Film Company. But he was a man. Couldn't have been the lady of the shoe. I got that picture in the files. You want me to get it? No, I don't think it would help. Boy. Give me the clips on the Martin West suicide. Yes, sir. Thanks. You say he had a wife? Yes. She was living in New York at the time. And she still is. She's working as a wardrobe mistress in some nightclub. I guess it wouldn't be too hard to find her. I'm going to check those clips. Mrs. West? Oh, you can't see the girls until after the show. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm Nick Alexander from the Bulletin. Uh, you're Martin West's widow, aren't you? Yes, I was married to him. I was his wife when he died. That was three years ago. What are you coming around now for, asking questions about that? Well, we got a tip, Mrs. West. Tip? Yeah, about, um, well, about his death and the circumstances surrounding it. The circumstances were sad, like always when someone dies. Mrs. West, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to be blunt. The tip links your husband and his death with Nora Love. Why can't you let such things be? Well, I've got to find out what happened. Nora Love is in trouble. How can that be? I read the papers. I see that she had a big press party. She quit work. She's going back to work. 
she is a Hollywood star. And you, you are a reporter. You believe such nonsense? I'm telling you, she's in deep trouble. I found her in a sanatorium. I think she's being blackmailed, and it has something to do with your husband. I don't care to discuss it. Please go. All right, I can't force you to talk. But she's living in a state of tension with the time fuse. And if it goes off, this room will be filled with reporters, and most of them won't care how it comes out. How Nora will look, or you, or your husband. It'll just be one nice, big, juicy story, a three-day sensation, and then they'll forget it. But the damage will be done. Nora won't get over it, neither will you. Why should I talk to you? Aren't you interested in a juicy story, too? All I'm trying to do is protect Nora Love. In the memory of a talented man. Thank you. I've been reading about him. He, he directed many fine pictures. He doesn't deserve to be dragged through the mud. Mrs. West, you can help me. Why not? It's been rankling in me too long. I, I can understand if you're a little bitter. Who says I'm bitter? As a matter of fact, I introduced them. It was when my husband was drinking so heavily. It's very bad. The more he drank, the further he slipped. It was a vicious circle. He needed a break. She was his break. I knew she would be. I was her drama coach at the studio. I saw that all that she needed was perceptive handling. Direction, someone to show her how to use her God-given talent. It was as simple as that. We needed each other. I brought them together. What happened? Martin Sword. He recognized that she was star material, so he gave her a light of her own, and then he basked in the glow. You mean she made him? You can understand that, can't you? So could I, but she never guessed that. She thought she would be helpless without him. That's why she's frightened to be alone. So dependent. She never knew that she was the strongest of all of us. Well, they stayed together until almost the end. I was not there when Martin died. But he must have been. In that hotel room, right after me. Oh. Well, you just don't stand there, handsome. Do something. Who, oh, Mrs. West? Who was there? Who else? The same person who must have given you that tip. Johnny Batson. How do you know Batson gave me the tip? It had to be. Then Martin died. The police did not call me. They called him. The newspaper clip said a motion picture company representative was called. I didn't know that meant Batson. That's who they meant. And for her, that meant trouble and heartbreak, her own kind, while I was having mine. I'm sorry. I hardly ever saw him near the end. But he came to see me. Before he died, that last Thursday, he died on Sunday, and that last Thursday, he came to see me. She was drunk, he was very sad. She was very successful, and he had just been taken off of another picture. He was finished, he was through. He was so drunk, he even talked about her. She was the one, she wanted to end it. She said it was hopeless, and she was ashamed of him. Poor Martin. He had no one to talk to about it. Only me. Oh. He also talked about dying. Mostly drunk and incoherent. But he also told me about a note he was going to write. Oh, he was a child, a dramatic child. He wanted to punish her, fix her wagon. That's what he said. Anyway, he died. He took the pills and he died. You know what I think? I think he left that note 
And I think he put in there everything about their relationship. He put his brand on that girl. And I also figured that Batson found that note. The reason I figure that is because overnight he went from just an ordinary press agent for the studio to a thousand dollar a week job for her. And all these years, these last three years, I thought I was enjoying the fact that now she is squirming. But it really doesn't help me. And it doesn't help Martin. Oh, the show is over. Please, please go. The girls have to change. Thank you, Mrs. Wesley. Say, Smith, are you learning about show business? Yeah. Message from Miss Love. Get him. Not yet. First, I want to give you a message, you you blackmailing punk. Now here's the message. You lay off a of Nora. Never again, as long as you live, you mention the note you stole. Now get out of Nora's life. She told you about that note. Oh, that dumb blonde. That. Dumb little blonde. Well, it doesn't make any difference. I've still got that note, Alexander. And despite all of her runouts and her private hospitals, she still wants to be a star. And I can still stop her just like that. Now, we all know that, don't we? You want to know what I know, Batson? I know that you committed about a half a dozen crimes three years ago in Martin West's hotel room. You stole evidence pertaining to the crime. And suicide is a crime. Then you withheld that evidence. Then you used it for, for extortion and blackmail. You couldn't prove that, not ever. All you've got is hearsay. Nobody even knows if there was a note. Nora Love knows it. I know it, too. I had a talk with Martin West's widow, and she told me that he told her he was going to write the note. Now, I think the New York City Police Department and the uh, Manhattan District Attorney's Office can make a case out of it, don't you? Huh? Or what about the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office? You carried your bullying and your blackmail there. I think they can get into the act, too, don't you? All right, you can bully a girl, you can pick on a girl. But if I open this up, you think you can handle the smart boys, the investigators who can smell the sick fear in a punk like you, who'll drive and drive until they get the note and the whole story? Yeah, but if that happened, and the story had come out, are you supposed to protect Nora? You told her you would, didn't you? Sure, you could do this to me. Then the story would get printed, Nora's washed up for good. That's the message, don't you get it? That's why she fired you. She doesn't care anymore. But what about you? You can go to prison for 10 years. What do you want me to do, big hero? I want you to give me the note. You think if there is a note, I'd carry it around? That's exactly what I think. What else have you got, you punk? That's your passport, isn't it? Your free pass to Hollywood, the money, and the whole thing. Now, you give me the note or I call the police. Gramercy 54598. Oh, so you're calling her? Reporting in? Sir Galahad pulled it off? Hello? Nora, this is Nick. L I don't... Don't hang up. I'm not going to ask any questions. I just want to tell you something. Go ahead. I found out about the suicide note. I got a TIP from Mrs. West. Now listen to me, I'm a Johnny Batson's. I got the note, he's off your back for good, you understand? Oh, Nick, thank you, thank you, 